Welcome to Around BCC, I'm Keith Tebow. Being December, BCC students and faculty are finishing their work for the fall 2010 semester with their eyes toward the semester break. Our top story this month, BCC is making history in the Commonwealth with the official opening of the eHealth Career Center in downtown New Bedford, which mixes a public education with private financial support and employment opportunities. In attempting to meet the needs of the burgeoning local health care community, Bristol Community College has partnered with the prestigious Princeton Review to open up the eHealth Career Center in downtown New Bedford. At a ribbon-cutting ceremony last month, BCC President Dr. John Sprague said this opportunity will help the college meet the demands of students looking to enter the health care field. Community colleges have long faced what I call a perfect storm. Uh, uh, we had uh, many qualified applicants on one side of the uh, uh, college, and on the other, we had plenty of openings and demand for uh, health care graduates. And we're the problem in the middle. We are the institution. Uh, uh, the example I always use is 1,000 applicants every year, not just one uh, year, but every year, 1,000 applicants for 72 positions. Uh, and you can imagine on the other side of the funnel, uh, the health care uh, providers, the hospitals and uh, other services uh, demanding uh, more nurses and more health care providers. And we just couldn't uh, increase our capacity because of the, uh, of the enormous uh, price on our uh, uh, cost on our resources. Under the program, students take part in technologically advanced hybrid health care courses, with much of their coursework done online with on-site visits for lab work. The project was coordinated in conjunction with New Bedford native Jerry Cavanaugh of Cavanaugh Software, who says the program will help keep local health care jobs in local hands. We know that there are 100,000 new jobs to be created in allied health. And you know what happens now in some, for some of those jobs? They import people from China, the Philippines, India, Canada in order to fill those jobs. Well, now we will be able to train our students for all of those jobs. And because of Commissioner Freeland's work and because of Jack Sprague being willing to go first, we will also be opening facilities just like this in three other cities in 2011. So with 100,000 new allied health jobs, we will be able to train almost half of those people to make certain that they are local people taking those jobs. One of those students looking to find a job in health care is Kelly Garofalo of Portsmouth. After graduating in the early 1990s, She's returned to BCC seeking to become an RN. She says she's attracted to the program because of the flexibility it provides. I've taken a couple online courses out at the University of Michigan and was comfortable. And so I felt this way, you know, the repetition, I can take the course at my own time, put the kids to bed, have their homework done, and be able to focus on my work, not have to worry about being at school and wondering what the kids were doing. You know, it just helps all around. Teresa Romanovich, Dean of BCC's New Bedford campus, says the new program, although highly scrutinized, provides 250 additional health care educational opportunities for South Coast students. Well, one of the things that happened for Bristol was that we were unable to do any expansion in New Bedford because of financial constraints. And I think if it hadn't been for this public-private partnership, we wouldn't be standing here today and this facility would not have been built. So I think it's an opportunity for the state in general to be thinking about how public and private partnerships work together and how they're crafted so that they're successful for both partners. And I think that was the unique part about this was that the public partner was at the table as well as the private partner and we had to talk through and walk through what the relationship would be like. Who owned the property? Who owned the, the uh, material that was being used by the faculty? How it was being used? And how the model might be replicated? The eHealth Careers program also brings with it business growth for downtown New Bedford. State Senator Mark Montigny says BCC's presence in downtown over the last 10 years has spearheaded a revitalization to the area. What BCC has done is given us the numbers to make sure the private investment follows the seed money. 
Downtown New Bedford would not have worked without that. The entire vision, I was there and helped develop the vision and then legislated that vision and then spent about $40 million of your money, our money. It would not have worked without BCC, more so than the university, bringing in now what, 1,700? With this program, what are we, close to 2,000? Students that every day go to the Celtic Coffee House and the Green Bean and after work uh, and study, they go to uh, no problemo. They, head over to restaurant after restaurant. One day after the official ribbon cutting, Massachusetts Governor Deval Patrick had the opportunity to tour the new facility. He says the public-private partnership forged at BCC is an important ingredient in not only improving patient care, but possibly also reducing health care costs for Bay State residents. This particular program is, uh, is vital to the kind of economy that we're trying to grow, not just here in the South Coast, but all around the, all around the, uh, the Commonwealth. The growth in the, in the healthcare industry and particularly the use of technology um, in, that, uh, in that field, uh, both to train and to uh, deliver services, is enormously important. And you can see, um, you've probably seen it before, but today I got a chance to, uh, to walk around and see some of the ways in which that uh, technology is being used to prepare tomorrow's workers. Shortly after taking office in 2007, Governor Patrick floated the notion of making community college education free for all state residents. He still holds out hope that can become a reality, especially in the form of developing programs for displaced workers. I have a concern about uh, a, a challenge we in the Commonwealth and frankly the whole country is facing around long-term unemployed, people who have been out of work for a year and a half or two years, who, are, who have lost or are, are losing or are very concerned about losing their edge. They may come back into the workforce into a different job than the one they had when they lost their, uh, lost their work. And we're going to need the community colleges to help us help them. Uh, get ready to re-enter the, uh, uh, the workforce. And I think looking at how we can leverage the community colleges better um, uh, to, uh, to meet that need is something I want to I work on in the next term. The eHealth Careers Program currently has 150 students taking classes this fall, with more on the way for spring. Romanovich says using private resources in public education may not be best for all educational institutions. How did it work for us? It's great. It's the wave of the future. It's the only way that I think public education is going to be able to move forward in this kind of economy. But it was also the richness of the relationship besides the resources. I mean, they just bring a whole other perspective to education. We now have a lot of employers at the table. And I think it just makes everyone think differently about how, how we're going to work education in the future. There are still opportunities for students to register for the eHealth Careers Program. For more information, visit the special website, eHealthCareersBCC.com. Governor Patrick referenced the importance of community colleges in providing workforce development for displaced workers. In October, we spotlighted BCC's Green Center, providing such a service in the area of green technology and sustainability, while the Green Center also held its grand opening last month. The old Quaker Fabric Factory on Duval Street in Fall River is officially the new home of BCC's Green Center, which focuses on offering training to students looking to learn new technologies on making our energy usage more efficient. Fall River Mayor Will Flanagan says the transformation of a textile mill to a high-tech learning center is a plus for the city and its residents looking for work. And as we stand here today, we're in a building that used to have textile machines running 24 hours a day and seven days a week. But today we're making a commitment to green technology and in types of green jobs that the folks that come here will receive the training and education in. In weatherproofing homes, uh, we have an opportunity to train a workforce uh, that will then go out into the field and make a living. And when we have a city like Fall River, which struggles with its unemployment rates, uh, to have workforce training here in our city shows the commitment that we are making to our workforce so that individuals who engage in this type of trade have an opportunity to continue to better their skills, to improve their life, and to can you continue to make a living for their family. The center partners with the Mass Clean Energy Center in developing programs that meet the specifications of the Mass Green Initiative. Workforce Development Program Director Mary Beth Campbell says BCC is a leader in bringing this opportunity to the South Coast.
This is really what we're trying to strive here to do in Massachusetts in complementing all the legs of the stool and what makes Massachusetts really nation leading in terms of clean energy. Uh, we're second in the nation in our clean energy policies. We like to say we're first in the nation east of California. Uh, so this is really huge in terms of our community college system making us help, uh, helping us be stewards in the nation in terms of clean energy. By the way, BCC practices what it preaches in terms of becoming more green. On-campus efficiencies have resulted in a 46% savings in water consumption and a 25% savings in energy costs over the last few years. We'll have more of Around BCC right after this. Hello, my name is Wayne Wood, Director of Public Safety here at Bristol Community College. Bristol Community College, Fall Rivers Campus, shares Ellsbury Street with two area high schools, Bishop Conley High School and BMC Durfee High School. If the college is closed due to weather or for some other reason, it is likely both high schools are going to close at the same time. With approximately 300 students leaving Bishop Conley and over 2,000 students leaving Durfee, our students and staff often find it very difficult to get off campus. We put together this video to give you alternative ways to leave campus without getting caught in traffic jams, especially at the intersection of President Avenue and Ellsbury Street. We want you to arrive at your destination with minimum delays, but most of all, to arrive safely. The majority of our students and staff only know one way to get home from here, and that is to take a left out of the campus onto Ellsbury Street. As an alternative, take a right onto Ellsbury Street. At the end of Ellsbury, you'll bear left, which will put you on Valentine Street. At the third stop sign, you will intersect with Robeson Street. Anyone living in Fall River can take any direction from Robeson Street to reach their primary destination. If New Bedford, Providence, Taunton, or Newport is your desired destination, then take a right onto Robeson Street and head north. Robeson Street will turn into Highland Avenue. At the end of Highland Avenue is a set of lights. This is the intersection of Highland Avenue and Wilson Road. Continue straight through this intersection and the road merges onto Route 24 North. If Taunton or Points North is your destination, just continue north on Route 24. For those of you heading to Providence or New Bedford area, you will want to head south on Route 24. To do this, take your first exit off Route 24 North, which is Exit 8 Airport Road. Take a left at the lights and follow the road to the rotary. Take your first right off the rotary, which puts you onto 24 South. Route 24 South will bring you to Interstate 195 East or West. East will take you to the New Bedford area, and West will take you to the Providence area. Will you please do me a favor? Someday on a good day or when you have time, try taking this alternate route and see for yourself that you do have options when you leave our campus. Thank you very much, and remember, your goal is to arrive home safely. Welcome back. For the second year in a row, the academic community at BCC has come together to incorporate the same book into its curriculum. BCC's One Book Project allows for college faculty and students to create programs around one universally accepted text. Organizer Denise DiMarzio says the program was launched last year, with the college adopting the graphic novel Persepolis. This year, the selection is Tuesdays with Maury, the true story of a journalist who visits his old college professor who's suffering from Lou Gehrig's disease. She says because the book is being used by many academic programs, there's a good possibility many students will be exposed to its message. What we, what we really hoped for is a student coming in this fall gets their bookstore schedule and goes to the bookstore and finds that Tuesdays with Maury is appearing in you know, three of their five courses. So to show students that you can really come at a book from many different angles and that it's not just confined to a particular subject, but that books should uh, travel across their pages and, and throughout um, the classroom walls into our lives. That's what, that's what they are. So far, over 30 professors are incorporating the book into their curriculum, impacting over 800 BCC students. But DiMarzio says the One Book Project is more than just utilizing the text in class. It also includes campus-wide events that touches upon different themes in the book. 
the book gave us lots of opportunity to look at different areas, the, the medical area, the ALS aspect, the idea of um, living fully even if you're in some kind of trouble, um, the idea of facing a terrible situation, um, grief in American culture, death and dying, you know, how it's in, in these days, it's something that's a process that's very far away from us, unlike even as few as, uh, you know, 30 years ago when uh, funerals took place in people's houses. So there's a big change. Um, and so, you know, the book has been really great to open up all these doors into all these areas. This year, the One Book Project Committee was able to secure funding from the BCC Foundation to purchase copies of Tuesdays with Maury, as well as pay for special events. Marzio says the growth of the program ensures that it will continue again next year. We'd like to uh, try to get a few more committee members because we're a little bit small for the um, amount of work and the number of details it takes to, to put the project together. Um, so it would be great to have a third year. We, we plan on doing the same process, which is um, in December at our closing event, we will have a box for nominations of titles. Uh, with certain criteria. People will be invited to uh, submit titles at that time and also throughout the spring semester. And um, we'll then, the committee will then winnow those down to make sure that those titles that were suggested do in fact meet the criteria. And then we'll put those out for a vote to the college community at large um, with a little descriptor of what the book is um, in, a, in a voting survey. And the winner will be the winner. Um, a lot of colleges don't do it that way. It seems like the committee selects the book based on whatever they base it on. But so far we've found that um, this process works nicely because then, you know, students and the faculty get a chance to select the book that they are being encouraged to, to read and to use uh, in their various courses. Um, so we'll probably do that again. You can find out more about BCC's One Book Project on the college's website and also on a dedicated page set up on Facebook. Time now for the latest edition looking at BCC's alumni in your community. Hi, I'm Kathy Torpy Garganter and I'm the proud graduate of Bristol Community College, class of 1973 in dental hygiene. I grew up in Somerset, Massachusetts and I've been very fortunate to have fabulous parents. Um, my, d my dad worked for the Four River Line Pier and actually brought the Battleship Massachusetts to the Four River area and always volunteered, whether it was at Charlton Memorial or JC's, but he was always an active volunteer, which led me into volunteerism. My mom worked for the telephone company and she was the first female to be a central office repair person. So she also gave me the motivation and the work ethic that I needed to be able to survive in dental hygiene, which was a very competitive program at Bristol Community College. I have a sister, Jean and Chris, and I also have a brother, Scott. I'm married to Kevin Garganta, who is also from Somerset, and he is the director of the Human Service Program at Bristol Community College. However, we did meet 36 years we've been married, and we are high school sweethearts. So we go back um, a long way, but are both very interested in education and have ended up at Bristol Community College. I actually fell in love with dental hygiene by, and always wanted to be uh, a dental hygienist. Since I was very young, probably around 13, the time that you get your braces. And I just love the dental assistant in the orthodontist office. And I wanted to grow up to be just like her. And she said, no, you want to be a hygienist. And I said, OK. And then I learned about hygiene. And um, that was my life's goal. And she was absolutely right, hygiene, teeth on me. I actually am in the third graduating class of the dental hygiene program so it was brand new and when we started to research where could I go to school to be a hygienist BCC had just started their program so I was in the right place at the right time and was able to get into the the program very gratefully but it's a very close-knit class because it's such a competitive program that we all had to stick together in order to uh, be able to succeed together and we we're fortunate enough to have fabulous instructors 
and we all passed our dental hygiene boards, which allowed all of us to just have fabulous lives. After I left BCC, I transferred immediately to UMass Amherst, and uh, I had to work with them a bit so that they could accept their credits because no one was accustomed to having a person come from an associate's degree in dental hygiene and go on. There were very few people with baccalaureate degrees and there was almost no one with a master's degree. And so at that time I was a little um, odd for them to deal with. But I did end up in this wonderful program called Bachelor's Degree of Independent Concentration which allowed me to really uh, create my own major which I did and called Community Dental Health Education. That allowed me also to take courses to be able to come certified for the Commonwealth of Massachusetts as a secondary health teacher. And I did my student um, teaching in health in Northampton, and it was really a great experience. Kevin and I were married in our senior year of college, and um, then we were fortunate enough to work in Boston for a few years where I was able to get a job at Middlesex Community College. And when I was hired there, right after uh, UMass Amherst, I then realized I needed to have a master's. If I was going to teach college, I had to have a master's. And I enrolled at Boston University Graduate School of Dentistry in their Master's of Dental Public Health program. And I graduated from there in uh, 1980. And right after that, I, Kevin and I moved back to Somerset right after the blizzard. The blizzard did me in. And I left teaching at Middlesex and took, went into private practice for nearly a decade before I could get a teaching position at Bristol Community College. I love teaching dental hygiene, it is, um, and I love giving back. I love being able to share dentistry that I loved so much. And I s always maintained dental hygiene practice, so I always worked a half a day a week so that I would have fresh stories for the students. I taught things like uh, dental anatomy and medical emergencies and by working still in private practice a few hours a week I could come back the next day and talk about the patient who fainted or the person who had the complicated medical history and I always had fresh new stories so I loved combining the actual practice of dental hygiene with being able to be the teacher of dental hygiene. In 1982 I opened up a uh, small business which was as a professional speaker and consultant. And being able to be a, a faculty member allowed me to do a few lectures and seminars during the academic year. And as a professional speaker, I began in dental hygiene, began doing continuing education courses for dental hygienists. Then, because of that, I evolved to do a lot of writing. I've published eight articles in professional journals and um, in both dental hygiene and radiology. I have spoken to groups as small as three and as large as 3,000 as the keynote speaker for the uh, American Orthodontic Association. I've traveled all over the United States and Canada as a professional speaker but it all kept me on the cutting edge of dental hygiene. Because of that, um, I got involved as uh, President Sprager's second person to be asked to do the Presidential Fellowship Program, where I designed a specialty program for our students that's still in existence now, and uh, Eileen Shea um, is the director of that program, and it's called Presidential Scholars, and it's for gifted students to be able to get involved in more things at the college so that their portfolio becomes very attractive to competitive colleges or competitive programs in state colleges. And from that, um, the president asked me if I would come to Attleboro and uh, actually Executive Vice President Dave Feeney asked if I would start uh, a program here in Attleboro, that they had a wonderful opportunity to go into the former Attleboro High School. and. I promised to do that as long as it was for a year because a lot of what I do is program planning and I like to do any kind of projects, um, very project based. And they knew that so from that I said I'd stay a year and right at the end of the year I was all packed and ready to go and uh, ready to move out when we had an opportunity to rent this building here at uh, Texas Instrument had been sold and the new owners wanted to rent this particular building to BCC. 
So the president asked if I would stay on, and I agreed to stay for a couple more years. And here I am six years later, and uh, fortunately we were able to purchase the building. We began at, in Attleboro taking their evening satellite program of just under 50 people, and we expanded that to a full day program at the uh, old, uh, or I should say the former Attleboro High School. And we began with just under 300 students, and today, six years later, we have 1,300 students. The BCC education was really the foundation of everything, because not only was I coming out of BCC with an associate's degree, I was coming out as a professional. And so my whole confidence level, I knew that from that moment on, I could support myself. I never needed anyone else but I could take care of myself, and if I had children, I could take care of them. I could um, really function in society. I would always have a way to be able to make a living. I've had a wonderful life, and I have a great family who are very supportive, and a husband that you know allows me to grow. And working together as a team, you know, BCC is really now has an impact on our day-to-day -day lives. Hi, I'm Ashley Martin, staff reporter. Hi, I'm Katrina Mercier, fashion editor. Hi, I'm Janine Barreo, staff reporter at the BCC Observer. Here's what we have planned for the December issue of the BCC Observer. Our front page story is on bullying and the new Massachusetts anti-bullying law with comments from BCC students. We introduce you to the new BCC Student Senate for the 2010-2011 academic year. In sports, we look at the BCC B's basketball squads. And we look at winter fashion trends and what new music BCC students are listening to. Make sure you pick up a copy of The Observer at any BCC campus location. Thank you. Here are some other news and notes now from around BCC. Being we're in the holiday season, BCC held its annual Fall Jobs Fair last month at the Fall River campus. Patricia Condon of BCC's Career Services Office says despite the tough economy, students can still find some employment opportunities. You know, it is difficult because of the economy, but I find that when we speak with local employers, they are always looking for good people. And they may not have the number of jobs that they've had before, but they do have jobs. And what we try to do is bring students and employers together more easily. So we get students prepared for the job fair. All of our students get information. They get information, on, you know, tips on how to prepare. We do classroom workshops on resume writing. And then when we talk with the employers, we, uh, we constantly are asking them for feedback. Were students prepared? Um, did you, were you able to hire any students? And as they come on campus and meet our students, many of these companies here today are repeat companies. They've been here a number of times. They find that the students are prepared. They find that our students have the skill sets that they're looking for. So it hasn't been that difficult to get them. Do we have to make a few more calls? Yes. But we do have companies that are here today that are very pleased with the quality of students that they've been getting and they find students well prepared and they've hired our students in the past and have had success. Condon says the college will be offering another jobs fair during the spring semester. Students who will be entering BCC for the first time in the upcoming spring semester are encouraged to take part in student orientations to be held Tuesday, January 18th at the New Bedford campus, Wednesday, January 19th at the Fall River campus, and Thursday, January 20th at the Attleboro Center. Contact the college for more information. Those in the Attleboro area in need of emergency health training can do so this spring from 8 a.m. to 4.50 p.m. on Saturdays at the Attleboro Center. The classes are also offered on Tuesday and Thursday evenings at the Fall River campus. That's all for Round BCC this month. We leave you today with greetings from some of the college's international students as they prepare for the holiday season. I'm Keith Tebow. Happy holidays, and we'll see you in 2011. Cześć, jestem z Polski i życzę wszystkim wesołych świąt. Lazetka Wird. Feliz Natal. Przyszedłem. Un vinga Cipria de Uroi. Gazuar Festat. Nós somos brasileiros, queremos desejar a vocês Feliz Natal e um próspero ano novo.